Dean Henry and uh, the members of the Board of Trustees, faculty, uh, family, and most importantly, the graduating class of 2014, I think what I'm going to say now is the most important thing you're going to hear this afternoon, and that is that you guys are awesome. Congratulations. Congratulations. You know, I want to begin by recognizing the journey that you've been on as a class. And I heard uh, uh, Dean Henry talk about uh, students who've been here part-time, full-time. Well, for the full-time students, you put your lives on hold for a couple of years. And for those of you who are working professionals, you've juggled life, family, work, and most importantly, women, who I understand are a third of this year's class. You will help change what I think is a very sorry fact that that women get paid 30% less for doing the same job as their male counterparts. You can make a difference. And I understand there are a number of veterans among you who have enriched Stern with your perspective and your example. My father was a general in the Indian Army, and so for me, your service and your sacrifice mean a great deal. It's a very special part of what it means for me. And finally, for the families who supported you and stood by you, uh, today's achievement is very much yours as well. So congratulations to all of you once again. You know, I, uh, I kind of went back to my days at business school from the Indian Institute of Management in Ahmedabad. And I remember what it felt like. That's 33 years ago. So time does fly by, and it'll fly by for you too. That's the good news but it felt really good. Uh, I really enjoyed my time then. In some ways, I would say I probably enjoyed it a little too much. And, and many great experiences remain with me still. Uh, from the faculty who inspired me to the friends I made to, uh, to the wonderful lady from my class whom I married, who's in the audience today and who's the source of my joy and happiness and with whom I've had two wonderful daughters, one of whom is here as well. So it's those memories and those bonds and those friendships that I wish for all of you as you go on your journey. But this afternoon, what I really want to talk about, I want to get to the serious aspect of this, is what uniquely, I believe, equips all of you as Stern graduates to succeed, not just in the job market today, but as leaders tomorrow. Stern is one of the oldest and most prestigious business schools in the world. And the skills and the practical knowledge and the worldview that you're all graduating with is a testament to that. But Stern's also been a historic kind of setter of the rules of the game on equality. Hiring its first female faculty member in 1913, seven years before women were guaranteed the right to vote. As graduates of Stern, you are all the inheritors of this legacy of equality, and it's a legacy that continues to this day and includes equal treatment, equal opportunity, equal rights, irrespective of gender, of ethnicity, of your sexual orientation, the fact is of your religion, whatever. But you have an opportunity to be more than inheritors. You have the opportunity to be champions of equality as well, and in a way that I believe will fuel your success and enable you to do well and do good at the same time. So I'm going to spend the next few minutes talking about that opportunity, and I'll focus on two hallmarks of Stern, the importance of diversity and the belief that business can be a force of good in the world. So my passion for diversity comes from the fact that I am diverse. I mean, to state the obvious, you know, I tend to stand out in a room and I see one other young man here with a beard and a turban, but beards and turbans will do that to you. You stand out in a room. My part-time hobby is being randomly searched by the TSA at airports. <laughs> it's true, it's true, and I run a global company. So that's not exactly common for someone who looks like me. And I can tell you there have been a hundred times when I felt different from everybody else in the room, and you realize very early in your career that if I were not comfortable with myself, then I couldn't succeed. So it's completely critical to know that you should figure out who you are and be comfortable with it. What's important is what you do and how you do it, not where you came from or what you look like. And that's just going to be very important 
for your future. So let me put this for you in a different way. In nature, you get penalized if you're not diverse enough. Being a panda and having bamboo as your only food source quite dramatically increases your chance of becoming extinct. You get penalized in the business world too. IBM nearly went under in the early 1990s because it missed the entire PC revolution. Kodak missed the digital revolution. Diversity is what drives better insights, better decisions, better products. It is the backbone of innovation. It's what defines a great leadership culture. And there are four attributes of that that stand out for me. And the first is a sense of urgency. Our world today with its amazing technological advances and the fact that this innovation cycle is ever shortening, this world has no space for those who procrastinate. It's that urgency that makes me say to colleagues of mine in the company that if you have good news for me, take the stairs. But if you have bad news, take the elevator. I need to know that quickly so I can do something about it. The second is a sense of balance. A lot of people think that urgency and patience are contradictory and they could not be more wrong. You need to be patient enough to listen to everybody, but yes, you must have a sense of urgency to take a decision and to execute. And the third is to be courageous enough to take what I call thoughtful risks. Rarely are you going to have perfect information in the careers that you're all going to go to. The willingness to take a decision at any time at that time will depend greatly on your ability to take a thoughtful risk, which ultimately depends on your courage. And as Winston Churchill said, success is not final, failure is not fatal. It's the courage to continue that really counts. And the fourth is to be competitively paranoid. And by that, I don't mean be fearful, but I mean constantly ask yourself if you're missing something. Is there more to the problem? Is there a better solution? If you don't question everything, if you're not competitively paranoid, you will not have the sense of self-introspection that you so sorely will need to be a real leader. So, a sense of urgency, a sense of balance, deep courage, and competitive paranoia, all of these are tremendously facilitated if you surround yourself with the people who don't look like you, don't walk like you, don't talk like you, do not have the same experiences as you. And why is that so important? Because a group of similar people tends to think in similar ways, reach similar conclusions, and have similar blind spots. You need, a, you need to be able to harness the collective uniqueness of all your people to widen your field of vision, to see things differently, to fail harder, to innovate, and to question everything. So as Stern graduates, you're all fully equipped to do that in a way that helps to drive diversity, but also helps to make business a force for good in the world, which is my second point. We are seeing a great rebalancing of the planet from north to south, from west to east. There's a growing and increasingly global middle class. There's an estimate that it'll be as high as 5 billion people by 2030, more than double the size today. More importantly, for the first time, the projections are that a majority of the world and their population will no longer be impoverished in less than two decades. Yet, today, half the adults' population remains excluded from the financial mainstream. They don't have an identity. They don't have a basic way to participate in what all of us take for granted. Pay a bill, save money for a rainy day, borrow on reasonable terms. In many countries, youth unemployment is reaching record highs. Environmental issues are increasing, and the competition for resources has never been as fierce as it is today. There's never been a greater opportunity for business to be a force for good in the world. And I don't mean providing jobs and paying taxes and, and meeting needs. Of course we do all that. But I'm talking about much more than that. Global companies like Unilever are working with the United Nations on issues like sustainability. The World Bank has set a very ambitious goal of ending financial exclusion by the year 2020. And I believe that the private sector role is vital. At MasterCard, where I work, where I have the privilege of being a part of, we work with organizations like the United Nations World Food Program. They're leveraging our technology 
to provide aid to hundreds of thousands of refugees from Syria in Lebanon and Jordan in ways that reduce corruption and help the local economy. Remember, cash is the friend of corruption. Cash is not the friend of the person who's trying to be straight with what they're trying to do. We're working with African governments to channel social benefits directly to recipients, cutting out the greedy middleman and providing a sense of identity, security, and empowerment, most importantly, to those in need. I believe that working together, we can do well and we can do good at the same time. So, coming to the close of this and preparing my remarks for today, I was told that all of you, which I saw a few of you wearing, you would receive an NYU torch pin as part of the ceremony. And I'm thinking about that symbol. I kind of kept going back when I was a young kid in India growing up to something that President John F. Kennedy in the US said in his inaugural address so many years ago when he talked about the torch being passed to a new generation. And that message, along with a summons to do more for their country, resonated, right, with millions of people, especially younger people who were inspired to go into public service. They thought they were answering a noble call, and they were. And as Stern graduates, you've been handed a torch of your own that symbolizes all that you learned, the friendships that you've made, the values you've absorbed. It's a torch that in a larger sense says to the world, business can be a force for good. That multiple sectors, public, private, and civil society can combine to lift people up instead of leaving them behind. You've been handed a torch to a future of greater diversity and better business that can truly light the way to a better, much more equal world. Nurture it, protect it, kindle it, cherish it, but above all, share it. That's what I wish for all of you today and for the rest of your journey. Congratulations and thank you for the privilege of being able to address you today. Thank you.